liquidation. In this method, a metal with a lower melting point can be made to flow on a slopey surface to separate it from high melting impurities. The furnace is shown. The base of the furnace provides heat to the metal. You can see the sloping surface of the furnace on which the metal is liquefied and purified. The pure metal is then collected. The impure metal is introduced and when heated, the pure metal melts down since it has a lower melting point. And finally, the pure metal gets solidified. The impurities due to high melting point will remain and will not flow down. Zone refining, you can see how it works. For the process, a rod of impure metal is taken. It is placed in a tubular zone refiner. Inside the refiner, an inert gas atmosphere is maintained. A circular mobile heater is placed around the rod. The heater moves along the rod from one end to the other. At a time, the heater melts a particular portion of the metal rod along with the impurities. As the heater moves to the next zone of the rod, the molten metal of the previous zone gets solidified. During solidification of the metal, the impurities of the zone move to the newly heated zone. Thus, as the heater shifts from one zone to another of the metal rod, the impurities also shift to the zone of molten metal. By the time heater reaches the other end of the impure metal rod, the impurities get concentrated there. The end of the metal rod with concentrated impurities is then removed and discarded. This is repeated again and again. Column chromatography. It is based on the principle of adsorption. Here you can see a column packed with a solid stationary phase which can be an adsorbent like silica gel or alumina gel. The sample which is a mixture of compounds is fed into the column. You can see a mobile phase which is a liquid which can run through the column containing the mixture of compounds. Orange and green band represents the two components present in the mixture. The orange component having stronger interactions with the adsorbent will form a band at the top of the column while the other component that is the green component will form a band at the bottom of the column. It is because it has weaker interactions with the adsorbent. Now additional solvent, the pink band represents the solvent. Additional solvent is then added to the column. This solvent is known as eluent and it will help to carry the compound with it which can be then collected in a beaker. The green component due to greater interactions with the eluent will be collected first and then the orange component. Thus the two components present in the mixture can be separated by column chromatography. Extraction of copper from low grade ores. Copper can be extracted from low grade ores by a method known as hydrometallurgy. Here in this method Copper is first leached out using an acid solution or bacteria. The solution will now contain cupric ions. It is then treated with hydrogen gas. The reaction taking place will be Cu2 plus plus hydrogen gives copper plus 2H plus. So here cupric ions gets reduced to metallic copper. Now why hydrogen is used? It is because Hydrogen lies above copper in the electrochemical series. Hydrogen is more reactive than copper. 
let us discuss few question answers related to this chapter copper can be extracted by hydrometallurgy but not zinc explain copper is less reactive than hydrogen therefore it can be extracted by hydrometallurgy zinc cannot be extracted because zinc is more reactive than hydrogen what is the role of depressant in froth flotation process you know that in froth flotation process we add collectors and froth stabilizers but now if you have two sulfide ores say zinc sulfide and lead sulfide then you need to add depressant depressant prevents certain sulfides like zinc sulfide to enter the froth in the presence of lead sulfide therefore helps in their separation sodium cyanide is used as a depressant why is the extraction of copper from pyrites more difficult than that from its oxide through reduction copper pyrites contain ferrous sulfide which needs to be oxidized to feo and then removed as slag which is fesio3 whereas in oxide ore such impurities are not present explain zone refining and column chromatography now for such questions first you need to write the principle of the method and then describe the method in your own words and you can even give examples where zone refining is preferred where column chromatography is used